All right, good people. All right, good people, we're back. Okay, tell me if you can hear me. Okay, I'm back. All right, very good. All right, we had some technical difficulties. Not exactly sure what, what, what was going on. Um, again, this is my first time doing this to this degree, as well as um, trying to get Dr. Sanza on. All right, so um, can you hear me well, um, Ms. Liza? <laughs> Reverend Sharon, all right, you're back. There you go. So. We, we're, I'm going to be a solo act tonight because um, Dr. Sansa, for some reason, I could not bring her in. So we're going to do the best that we can, all right? Keeping it real now with Dr. Higgy. It was going to be with Dr. Sansa and Dr. Higgy. Um, Dr. Sansa, um, uh, we could not get her in and to share our screen. So we're going to work out the kinks, and um, um, we should have practiced a little bit more. We practiced what we were going to say, but we did not practice the techie part of it. And um, I am not uh, a techie person. That is not my area of expertise. OK. So um, what we want you to do is put into the chat any questions that you might have. Um, let's look at the elephant in the room. First of all, I am dressed this way for a reason. OK. We are in a battle. We're in a war. And I happen to be on the front line. Um, let me know if you're, you're back in and if you can hear me very well. There is a delay from my screen and what I can see. All right, Sister Gail. All right. I see you waving at me. Very good. All right. We got people coming back into the, into the uh, live um, process here. And we're grateful that you're able to spend just a few minutes um, with me on, on this ep first episode of Keeping It Real with Dr. Higgy. Um, we decided, Dr. Sansa and I were talking, we're always brainstorming. She's um, one of my colleagues. Um, in which we both practice functional medicine. And functional medicine is the type of medicine in which you begin to understand how the body functions. You begin to understand how the body functions. Again, I said we begin to. There's so much we don't know about this body. As such, we have aligned ourselves with, selves with the practice of medicine in which we understand at the basic core the functionality of the body, how this wonderful vessel that God gave us functions. Um, and as such, um, it's a process. It's a process. The elephant in the room is <clears throat> coronavirus. Coronavirus has been around since the 60s. I never heard of it before. My mother is a virologist. Um, and she says, oh, yeah, I knew about that a long time ago. She knew it was an RNA virus. I had to look it up. Matter of fact, I had some of my um, friends tell me, look on the back of the Lysol can. It says it's effective against coronavirus. Now, there are about four different strains of this virus. But this particular virus is a novel virus. It's a new virus. Um, even though these, the family of coronaviruses have been around um, since the 60s, just like my last name is Higginbotham, as a family, but they're offshoots of the family. <clears throat> this one is um, called SARS-CoV-2. You guys have heard of it. There's MERS, M-E-R-S. There's SARS, the first one, which was around in, in around the 2003 time is when that um, um, epidemic came around. This particular one um, was first found in China, in the Wuhan province of China, back around October, November of last year. 
And we are now finding out that the first person who died of it in America occurred February the 6th of um, this year. Um, previously, it was thought it was in March. But as the process is unveiling itself, they're finding out more and more about this novel virus. Novel, meaning we don't know. A lot of us do not know, none of us know exactly what's going on with this virus. And, um, and I'm coming to you this afternoon to get your questions, let you know that we are there for you. Um, and we're, we're working this out all together. I am on the front line. I happen to work at Harris County Jail, and now I'm working three days a week. Um, and as such, even more so. I had my first two patients Friday before last. One came in with a fever. She was not aware that she had a fever. And my nurse um, very astutely took her straight down to the medical arena <clears throat> in which they proceeded to test her. Um, we found out three days later, it took about three days for the testing to come back, that she was positive. So I never actually got a chance to see her. She was in our um, area, in our office area, in our clinic area, but I never got a chance to actually see her. The next patient um, I saw, pregnant, I did her ultrasound as I interviewed her. Her primary complaint, she had a, a little congestion, but her primary complaint was loss of sense of taste and loss of sense of smell. And as I've been studying this virus and the ongoings of the progression of this virus for the last three months, I knew immediately she had COVID-19. So I proceeded with her assessment and I also had my nurse take her down to the medical area of the jail and they tested her with the nasal pharyngeal swab. You've guys seen this on TV where they put the swab down. I had it done. I felt like my cerebellum was being um, um, drilled um, and thank God I was negative at that time but that was this is a very dynamic process. Once again I found out this past Tuesday that she was positive. Now, being on the front line, I am very careful. My father is 90, almost 90 years old that I live with, and my husband says he's old, so I'm very careful. When I am in that arena, <clears throat> I say I hazmat up. Of course, I wear gloves as I always do. Um, before I even um, begin to see my patients, I um, sanitize the complete area and I wear my N95 mask, and I wear another mask on top of that. I wear my goggles, I wear a face shield, and I have my, my hair in a bonnet. Um, and I'm very, very careful um, as to exposure. Then when I leave that arena, I'm also very careful. I go straight home, and the shoes that I use um, at the jail, I sanitize those down. I leave them at the front door, actually in the garage, the door into my garage. And then I, I remove the clothing that I had on and I put it in the washing machine. Then I take a shower and then I shower. Then I um, gargle with Dr. Tishner's mouthwash. This has been around since 1864. I love this. Matter of fact, I tell my patients before they come into my office, and I still see patients in my office, not too many, but they have to gargle with this twice a day for at least four days before they come into my office. Now, my first patient who did it, she says, Doc, why are you trying to kill me? This thing was hot. I'm like, well, sweetie pie, you've got to read the directions. The directions said diluted with five parts of water to one part of the Dr. Tishner's. Now, now why am I asking my patients to gargle with Dr. Tishner's? Well, the virus wants to live in the back of the throat, the nasal pharynx area, the mucosa of the eyes, okay? That's where the exposure is, all right? So if you're gargling with an antiseptic, now this used to be called Dr. Tishner's antiseptic. Now they call it Dr. Tishner's mouthwash. My brother remembers this. Who else remembers Dr. Tishner's? Type in the chat. Hi, Ms. Teresa. Hi, Ms. Nellie. Ms. Marshall. 
Long time. Good to see you guys. Well, virtually at least. Okay. But anyway, so you gargle with that, a dilute version of it, and you can use Listerine as well. If the virus, if you happen to have been exposed to that virus, and one of my virtual mentors, um, Dr. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but one of my virtual mentors, I'm looking at the time, he says it's not about if you're exposed. It's about when you're exposed. So he believes that we're all going to be exposed to this virus. And as such, we've got to optimize the health of our immune system. So the theme for today was going to be immune resilience. Immune resilience. What do we do, first of all, to protect ourselves? so that we won't expose ourselves as well as our family to this um, infection. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I um, practice functional medicine. And so I am a member of the Institute of Functional Medicine. And they have some tips for us. Now, some of these tips you guys already know. I'm just going to go over them just to make sure that we're on one accord. One, well, you got to wash your hands. The most well-established prevention against any infection is cleanliness. We've got to wash our hands. Now, you know, we in the church used to say cleanliness is next to godliness. That's not in the Bible, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But we've got to wash our hands, okay? Wash your hands before you go to the restroom. Wash your hands when you come out of the restroom. Constantly wash your hands. Constantly wash your hands with soap and water. And some people say wash your hands um, to the ABCs saying ABCs two times. You can use a hand sanitizer, soap and water. Well, hand sanitizers are now at a premium. You can't find them anymore. Just good old soap and water does it. Um, now, here in Houston area, there's a mandate as of Monday that of universal masking. So we all have to wear masks as of Monday. All right, coming up. OK, so cover your, your hands and your mouth, all right? Um, when you're coughing, I was at the jail a few weeks ago, and one of the um, sergeants was coming out of the break room. We all had our N95 mask on. And it's been a mandate for some time that everyone in the jail wear their N95s. And he came out of the break room without his N95 on, coughing. Wait a minute. The Higginbotham in me came out. My brother can tell you what that means. I, I chastised him. He says, well, I just came out. He says, but when you cough, at least put your hand over your mouth. He did not put his hand over the mouth. He did not practice good cough or sneeze etiquette. I was not happy, all right? We've got to be aware that we are all vectors. We are our vectors. We are potentially, like my mom says, typhoid Mary. We can spread this virus as anyone else. And if your immune system is strong, and we're going to talk in just a little bit about immune resilience, and we'll talk a little bit more about that next time when we get Dr. Sons on as well, then you may not succumb to the complications because of this virus. But if your immune system is weak, and those of, of us who have any kind of comorbidities, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, um, an article came out recently that obesity is the number two reason why people um, potentially have complications because of COVID. Well, 60 to 70 percent of America, um, of Americans are obese and or overweight. One in three children are obese and or overweight. So just the simple things, um, cough and, and sneeze um, etiquette. Don't touch your face. We tend to touch our face. We tend to touch our face at all times. Scratching this, um, I was at the store um, getting groceries, and, and the uh, young lady indeed had gloves on. But I saw her dealing with her face and, and lifting her eyeglasses and, and adjusting her glasses with her gloved hands. And I kindly asked her, would you mind? Please change your gloves. Um, she said, well, I only, they don't, the store only gave me one pair of gloves, but I'll sanitize them. That's a whole other story that we'll get into as well, making sure when you do go grocery shopping, you bring your, your, your um, groceries home, you sanitize them, okay? 
Um, and we've got to keep surfaces clean. We've got to continue to keep our surfaces clean. Okay, so uh, some other things regarding what do I do? What do I do? I want to bring that to you to mitigate my um, not only exposure, but succumbing or coming down with this infection. Um, those of you who know me understand that I am um, really into nutraceuticals. And nutraceuticals are pharmaceutical grade supplements. Okay, put into the chat if you're still with me. Oh, you guys are still with me. Very good, very good. Hey, Sister Donna. Oh, my brother is saying, oh boy. <laughs> Why are you saying, oh boy? <laughs> Carla Ruffin. Hey, Sister Carla, long time no see. Let's see. Sister Maikita Way, she's been waiting on me to speak about this. And Sister Watt, good to, why am I saying sister? Okay, I'm a PK, so I tend to call people sister, okay? What do you want me to use now, Jarvis? My brother's saying use something now. I don't know what he's trying to tell me, okay? He's up there in Cincinnati. Hi, Sister Nicole, good to see you again, virtually. Okay, so I've got issues. I've got issues, guys. Okay, so one, vitamin C. This is one thing I use on a daily basis. Now. I use one called buffered ascorbate. Okay, it's, it's a powder form. Okay, um, this is kind of like toilet paper. You can't find this anymore. Okay, the last time I looked for it. So, matter of fact, you're in theory supposed to use this to bile tolerance. Okay, if you know what that means. Well, uh, I gave some to my husband and I didn't measure it. Uh oh, uh, he had bile intolerance. Okay, so I'm gonna let y'all. Think about what that meant. So um, 500 to um, 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. Now, what does vitamin C do? Vitamin C enhances your natural killer cell um, production or, or functionality. What are your natural killer cells? The natural killer cells are the front, the front line of your defense mechanism. All right? When an invader comes, okay, um, whether it be a toxic um, invader, whether it be a pathogen, a virus, um, a bacteria, or a fungus, your natural killer cell says, wait a minute, what is that that my body is seeing? I need to address that, all right? And basically, it spews out your natural killer cells, are the, it's the alarm system, and it tells all the other immune cells, the immune system is a wonderful system. It's like an orchestra, a symphony. They're all working together for the common goal to protect the host. You are the host, okay? So vitamin C optimizes the functionality of your natural killer cells such that they can go into action when they need to and cause the, um, um, the cascade of the immune functionality to um, proceed on. All right, another thing I have on my little nutraceuticals here. The next thing is zinc. That's nothing you can't find is zinc. So what is zinc? Well, zinc, who knows what zinc is? <laughs> who knows what zinc is? It's a mineral. Zinc is a mineral. Okay. Now, what zinc does, I'm about to get a little techie techie and my colleague said, don't get too techie but I'm a techie person, okay? What zinc is, it's a mineral. And what it does, it hijacks the machinery of the coronavirus, or any virus, not just corona, any virus. What it does, it tells that virus, stop replicating. What does that mean? Stop producing, okay? So how viruses work is they have to go into your, your body and they get in, this particular virus gets in through your respiratory system through your mucosa of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, all right? Gets in, then it goes into your cells, and it has to hijack the cellular machinery, all right? So it has to go into the cell membrane, all right, and intercalate itself into the DNA of your body, into your cells. It has to replicate. Viruses cannot live, in theory, for long outside the human body. So what zinc does it tells the, the um, RNA, which this is an RNA virus, to stop replicating. So it hijacks what's called the RNA replicase 
of the virus. So zinc. Now, this is a side note here. Some of us have issues where the a body's ability to bring zinc into the cells is compromised. I have, I did my DNA, okay, and my genes are such that my body cannot absorb zinc as well. I knew this way before corona. So I have to take more zinc than the average bear, so to speak, all right? So zinc is crucial. Another one is vitamin well, that's my vitamin D. Now, we all know what vitamin D does. I hope we do, okay? A lot of um, African Americans, well, a lot of people in general, not just African Americans, are deficient in um, vitamin D. Um, vitamin D, <laughs> it's so cool what vitamin D does. So, remember I was telling you about the, the immune cells, the natural killer cells, the white blood cells? <laughs> they basically, when they see an invader, they spew out this toxic chemical, okay? It's kind of like Clorox, it's kind of like Clorox. Oh, don't go there with president now. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get political here, okay? But it's, um, there's a lot of toxic chemicals that are spewed out by what's called a lysosome, a lysosome, L-Y-S-O-M-E, okay? And they spew out these chemicals onto the pathogen. Again, virus, bacteria, toxic, all right? <laughs> Vitamin D optimizes the body's ability to produce these lysosomes and these lysosomes to um, spew out these chemicals onto the pathogen. So if your vitamin D levels are low, that's not going to happen as well as it should. Now, wait a minute. You see here 10,000 plus you see K2. I take 10,000 international units of vitamin D daily. Now, really you should get your vitamin D levels checked. All right. You can also get your vitamin a levels checked. You can get your zinc levels checked as well. You should get these levels checked. That way your health professional could guide you as to um, the doses that you need to consume. For me and my body, I take 10,000. People who tend to be more overweight, and I am, all right, we need more vitamin D because vitamin D is fat soluble. It tends to live in the fat in the adipose tissues, okay? And so in order for your body to get enough vitamin D where it's functional, you need to increase the dosage. So we talked about zinc. We talked about vitamin C. Um, here we go. Vitamin A also optimizes the immune system. Um, those are the basics. The basics would be vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin A, and zinc. Now, the thing is to find them. So if you um, have issues with that, just contact my office. Most of you guys know um, um, my office, um, or you can um, email me at Dr. Higgy, D R H I G G I E, at sbcglobal.net, and um, I can um, help you with um, um, pointing you toward the right direction regarding that. Let's see, let's go into the check. Oh, my dad takes zinc. Yes, maybe that's why he doesn't get sick. Yes, indeed. Um, zinc deficiency causes hair loss. Yes, it does. Now, you gotta be careful with zinc. Zinc, everything, nothing in the body acts by itself. Everything works synergistically, okay? So zinc has to be balanced with copper. So if you're taking a lot of zinc, you got to be careful that your copper might be waste uh, or might be depleted, and we need copper as well. So you got, you got to be careful. Let me see what Nellie Anderson, Nellie says, I'm a, let's see, let's go back up. Nellie says, I'm a police first responder in, in Phoenix. Hi, Miss Nellie. Yesterday, our union informed us the availability of COVID-19 antibody tests because of our position. They're offering it to first responders in our family. I'm taking the test, but have you heard of this? Let's see. See more. Um, of the antibodies. Yes, yes, yes. So antibodies. Now, we're going off on, on a different um, road here. The antibody test, first of all, this is a novel virus. We'll, we're, we are in the wild, wild west right now. I would sing that song, The Wild Wild West. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. We're in the Wild Wild West right now. So, and everyone is rushing. All these technology lab companies are rushing to um, have, they want the best testing out there, the best PCR, which stands for polymerase chain reaction. They want the best testing out there. Um, now there's a spot test for the COVID-19. And really, that's a misnomer. COVID-19 is the disease. 
what they're looking for is the SARS-CoV-2, the SARS-CoV-2. Okay, that's what they're looking for. Um, the antibody test is the new on the horizon. So what they're testing for is what's called IgG and IgM. Now there's there's four main categories of immunoglobulins: IgG, IgA, IgE, and um, uh, IgM. Okay. So in theory, when the immune system has seen um, an attack, it's under attack. The body produces antibodies against that antigen. SARS-CoV-2 is an antigen, all right? Bacteria are antigen. Parasites are antigens. These antigens then signal the immune system to go into action, okay? All right. So then, once the immune system goes into action, then they produce antibodies against whatever they were going against. Now, they do that such that it's a wonderful thing. They can have memory. So in the event, the body sees that reaction again, or qualify that. That antigen again, the body, the immune system says, wait a minute, wait a minute, I saw you already. I already saw you. Hmm, you're not going to get me again. Okay, it already has these antibodies produced such that in theory it can attack that um, antigen, in this case SARS-CoV-2 again. Okay, so what they speculate is if we could See if someone has already been exposed to this virus, okay, with the antigen, I'm sorry, with the antibody testing. So they're testing for IgG. So in theory, IgG is indicative of prior exposure, okay, a few weeks to some months or years down the road, okay. IgM is current exposure. Usually your body will produce IgM within a few days, um, max about a week or so of exposure, okay. So with these antibody testing, they're testing for that, but here it is. This is a novel virus. There are some say, say that less than 10% of people who've been exposed will show positive for antibodies. So I would not rely on the antibody test. As a matter of fact, once again at the jail, I have a patient, uh, one of the providers. Uh, we're supposed to be wearing N95 masks, and she did not have her N95 mask on. She just had her regular level one mask. So there are different levels of masks. I've been in medicine since 1983. I didn't know about these different levels of masks until recently. But anyway, so she had her level one mask on. And I'm like, sweetie pie, why do you not have your N95? Oh, I've, been, I've had the infection before. I'm immune. I said, tell me your story. So um, her fiance got very, very ill. And... Um, so he got tested, and because he turned positive for SARS-CoV-2, she got tested, and her test was positive as well. But she had no symptoms, no symptoms whatsoever of the um, infection, all right? So she self-quarantined for two weeks. Then she subsequently had the um, antibody test, and her antibody test was positive, all right? So indeed, um, um, you can be... You can be um, carriers of this virus or any virus. You know, we're, we're focusing so much on, on this SARS. Any virus, we can be carriers but have no symptoms. Again, it depends on your immune resilience. How strong is your immune system? All right. Now, uh, let, me, let me go to the chat. Let's see. Um, um, Tanea, you take 1,000 milligrams, cool. Do you have any issues with your bowel? Because um, in theory, you can take it up to bowel tolerance. In theory, what you do is you take 500 milligrams maybe every two to three hours to get what your level should be. Because vitamin C is water-soluble. You will not overdose on vitamin C, okay? So bowel tolerance means when you start having diarrhea. That's what happened to my husband. That's what happened to him. Anyway, he said he purged. That's what he called it. He was a little bit miffed at me, but anyway, I'm like, that's good. It worked. So, so in theory, um, let's see. Good to know that antigen testing is limited. Um, actually, it's the antibody testing. Antibody. The antigen is the SARS-CoV. All right, let's see. Who else we got here? Um, any other questions? Um, I'm going to the chat. Can't find vitamin A in full script. Okay, what I will do is um, you... Um, Text me, I'm sorry, email me 
and I will have to put you on um, a regimen that has vitamin A in it. You might not be able to find vitamin A by itself. I see zinc in, on eye herb. Is there a certain kind you need? Well, zinc, um, some people like zinc. Um, this particular zinc is, I've got to get my, make sure I can read it. There's zinc picolinate, but some people don't like that. There's zinc, um, this one happens to be zinc as sucromyo zinc. Okay, so there's different, just get you some zinc as far as I'm concerned. Dr. Sonia Sons is in the chat. I wish you were here helping me out here deal with all this. Let's see. I'm going through the chat to see any other questions because I really want you guys to know that we're here for you. We're here for you. Um, I'm also now doing telemedicine. Um, I actually love it. So I, I see a few patients in the office. I have to get hazmat up, okay? But um, if you have any concerns, um, the government has released or, or um, loosen some of the restrictions regarding telemedicine. So I am seeing patients um, via telemedicine as well. Okay, I'm trying to go through the chat because I want to make, make sure that I answer your questions because time is well spent here and we, we, I want to uh, appreciate your, and honor your time because I know you got to get to your, your dinner, your oxtails and hammocks. We didn't even talk about food. That's a whole nother story. So, so let me talk about that right quick. Okay. Oh, elderberry? Yes. Now, at one time there was some concerns regarding elderberry um, because er elderberry might precipitate what's called the cytokine storm. Now, I said I wasn't going to get too techy here, but here it is. Yeah, there you go, zinc glycinate. Th thank you, Dr. Sanza. Zinc glycinate works good. Okay. So, and I like glycine because glycine helps you to rest, all right? So, the thing about elderberry is if your immune system is suppressed, sure, take you some elderberry, okay? Um, the question that Ms. Freeman says, does elderberry help prevent COVID? I would say it doesn't help. The, the whole thing is to optimize your immune resist, resilience, okay? Such that if you get the infection, you will bounce back. You be, there's an armor there. And Dr. Sanz is also giving, giving us the um, dosage of uh, zinc glycinate, 40 milligrams. Um, this particular one that I take is a special one that's absorbed better, and this one is 30 milligrams. Some people say take 20, 30, 40 milligrams twice a day um, as far as zinc is concerned. Oh, and here we go. G getting back to your zinc. There's zinc citrate, zinc acetate, zinc um, picolinate and zinc gluconate. So those are different kinds of zinc. All right, let's see. Um, hey, Ms. Dim Ms. Dimitri, kale. What about kale, Tanea? As far as getting your, your nutrients in, kale is good. Let's see. Jennifer says, what are you recommending for patients that were going to try to conceive this year? Would you say to wait until pandemic is over? Wow. That's an intense question, Ms. Jennifer. Mm. Because since this is a novel, virus we don't know we don't know about the maternal fetal transmission we don't know yet i've delivered a few babies since the um pandemic um at the hospital where i work we screen all of our patients who come in um in labor and if we're going to do a procedure ahead of time and thus far no, none of my patients have been positive but you know i pray every day for my patients that's an aside so um, that's a very good question. Um, you need to pray about that one, Ms. Jennifer. Ask God, ask God to guide you regarding that, okay, as far as that's concerned. And you know what? My battery is going out. Let me see. Turmeric and ginger is great. Let me, hey, guys, my battery is going down on my, on my computer. Ain't that something? Marcus Geis, hey, hey, God, Dr. Geis, how you doing? Um, Turmeric is good. Yes, ginger is good. They all help to support the immune system. Um, what I want you guys to do is email me or Facebook me, direct message me your questions. I want to answer your questions, and we're going to do this on a weekly basis. This is just the first time, and Dr. Saunders is going to come on next time. We're going to work out the kinks, and thank you so much for being patient with us as we, uh, as we um, um, deal with, as we work on this together. Um, Gail, you cooked some kale today? Good. <laughs> That's good. 
Um, let's see. Not for me. I think I'm one and done, but have several friends scared to conceive. Now, nah, yes. Oh, that's for um, your friends regarding the conception. I understand. I understand. Okay, guys. Um, let's see. Sharon, Sharon Collins, um, I'm going to address this. Elderly parents' protections. If you are not living with your parents and they're elderly, then don't visit them. Don't visit them. Okay? Um, if you're exposed. Oh, another little thing. I want to share this right quick with you. Direct message me about this. BrioTech, okay? BrioTech, um, I love and I use it on a daily basis. Yes, I'm using it right now, okay? It, even in my own house. What it is, it mimics the natural defense of the white blood cells, okay? Um, so it, it, it is hypochlorous acid. Remember we talked about the chemicals that the white blood cells and produce this, this barrage of chemicals? Okay, so this mimics it. Now, once the, once the, the immune system sees an, attack, an invader, it spews out what's called a respiratory burst. This is what this is. It only lasts for a few seconds, but it's just enough to initiate the healing process and the attack process. Okay, let's see. Gail, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. All right, let's see. One, one more. You have high blood pressure, diabetes, your gallbladder is bad. I'm overweight. What can I do? Okay, you got to work on your immune resilience. Start from scratch, okay? You got to work on what you're eating. You really got to try to go organic as much as you can. You got to stop the bread, the pasta, the rice, the potatoes, the french fries, sugar. That all hijacks your immune system. Oh, the, I forgot. The number one thing we can do to help our immune system? Sleep. Sleep. And as such, that's why I take melatonin, all right? Melatonin has been shown to optimize your immune system. Your body heals at night. Your body heals at night. We gotta sleep. We gotta get at least six to eight hours of sleep. That is the number one recommendation I have, and Dr. Sandra would um, attest to that, regarding your immune system. You gotta sleep, and number two, you can't be stressing. You can't stress. Stress, once again, also hijacks your immune system. We gotta sleep, we can't, st we can't stress, we gotta exercise. We gotta drink water. Now, I drink, different kinds of water, but I love this water. This is Flow, alkaline. It's BPA-free container, BPS-free container as well, okay? Um, and it indeed is alkaline water. So I, you got to hydrate. You got to do the basics. You got to drink your water. You got to sleep. You got to, um, can't be stressed. Um, and, you know, I'm in with this. We got to, oh, Sister, Sister Esther, says we got to breathe. Yes, we got to breathe. We don't breathe. Yes, my email is doctor, not, no period, just D-R-H-I-G-G-I-E at sbcglobal.net. D-R-H-I-G-G-I-E at sbcglobal.net. That's my email. And as well, um, you can, um, can you, if you have seizures, can you take melatonin? Yes, your body makes melatonin. Your body makes melatonin naturally. But there are certain nutrients that are necessary for your body to make that neurotransmitter. And some of us don't make it as much because of other issues. That's a whole other story. There's some genetic issues as well involved with that. Um, but yes, you can. And I would start with three milligrams of melatonin. Just start with three, milli three milligrams, maybe 30 minutes or an hour before you want to go to sleep and, 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 and try that. Hey, Miss Mitzi. Wow. Good to see you. Okay, good people. Um, my, my, um, Computer is, is on um, very low energy here. Thank you so much for spending the evening with me. Um, uh, we're keeping it real um, with Dr. Higgy and Dr. Sanz will be here on um, next weekend. So we plan on doing this every Sunday from now on um, as long as you need us. All right. Once again, I love you guys. God bless. Bye.